My name is Major General John Charles Fremont. Now, some of you may know me, some of you may not. Some people know me as um, the great conqueror of California. Some people know me as the individual who made the, the common phraseology, which is the Golden Gate, which I named back in 46. Some people know me as the first senator of the state of California. That's all true. The great explorer. That's all true. I'm not sure about great. But I don't like to be called, I don't want to be known or remembered as a conqueror. Because that is not what I am. I'm giving you a little bit of a history. As a second lieutenant, I was asked by the President of the United States to chart the country that is west of the Mississippi. When I did so, I gave him the kind of land that was out here. A lot of people thought this was a great, what they call the Great American Desert. We found out that was not true. Later on, <clears throat> in 1800, in 43 and 44, I came to California. I came here as an explorer. What I did find in California, however, was not what I was looking for. What I found in the state of California, what I found here in California, which was then owned by Mexico, so it is told. But what had happened by the time I got here in that time period, Mexico, ladies and gentlemen, is not a commonality. It's not something that people know. But Mexico, between the, eight, between the years of 1821 and 1846, 47, Mexico had a total of 42 different governments, ladies and gentlemen. 42. California fell under the district. They call it the, uh, the California Department in Mexico. The upheaval that was in Mexico was in the upheaval all over its holdings. California used to belong to Spain, if you know. The Mexicans overthrew the tyranny of Spain. And California became Mexican. <clears throat> but in the 40s, the early 40s, your American brethren came here. They came in their wagons and they crossed the Great Plains. By the time I came back, because I went back to I went back to Washington, made my reports, came back. By the time that I came back in 1845, December, I found that California had deteriorated from chaos to civil war. And why? Because Mexico itself had its own tyrants, and the people of California were so sick and tired of tyranny that they decided to do something about it. The California people got together and they overthrew the Mexican government because the Mexican government was oppressive to everything and everybody. They would come through and take the land that they wished. They would ravish the ladies. They would steal and they would plunder. And they were run by tyrants. Let me give you an example of the kind of tyranny they lived under. I've got here a testimony from a gentleman by the gentleman of the name of Santa Anna. And this is what he wrote. It is very true that I threw up the cup for liberty with great order and perfect sincerity. But very soon I found out the folly of it. A hundred years to come, my people will not be fit for it. They do not know what it is. People do not know what freedom is. How is it, ladies and gentlemen, that we do not know what freedom is? But this is what he said. They were enlightened, as they are, and under the influence of a Catholic clergy. A despotism, ladies and gentlemen. A despotism is a proper government for them. But there is no reason why it should be a wise and virtuous one. This, written by an individual who killed everyone, in the Alamo, in 
1836. What happened to his kind despotism then? When he had everybody killed, everybody slaughtered. Well, there's no such thing as a despotism that is benign. No more than there's such a thing as a benign cell of consumption in your body. It won't grow. It will fester till one day you have to operate or you shall surely die. And that's what was happening here in California. So the people overthrew the government. By the time I came here, ladies and gentlemen, California no longer belonged to the Mexican government. It belonged to the people of California. And who were the people of California, ladies and gentlemen? Us. That's well, <laughs> Yes, exactly right. Exactly right. Young lady, you're very enlightened, and I appreciate that very much. My compliments. But at the time, the people of California, known as Californios, they were Mexican, Hawaiian, English, American, Russian, French, Swiss, and from all over the world, all over the globe, men were here. This did not belong to Mexico. So what happened is the people of California decided they were going to rule themselves. We had a problem, however. If you will, we have California. You have North and South California. What happened was that the people in the South who were run by a gentleman by the name of P.O. Pico, he was the civil authority. He wanted to invade the North of California. The, set, the uh, military governor, Juan Castro, wanted to invade the South because he did not trust them. One called the other a tyrant. And both of them were tyrants. So the people of California were so sick and tired of all of this war. Now, when I came here in 45, the people of California, the Californians, wanted to see something different. I've got in my hands right here, ladies and gentlemen, notes and writings from the French, from the English, and from the Russians who wanted to take California because they knew California was going to fall. But who was California going to fall to, ladies and gentlemen? The Tsar? Should we have a Russian flag flying on California soil? Yes or no? No! How about an English flag, ladies and gentlemen? Should we have an English flag flying here? No. How about the how about the French? Do we want the French flag flying here? No. Why? Because Europe is full of despots, and the United States of America has not founded its government upon European principles. The United States government is founded upon the principles of individual liberty and self-government. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is not Europe. So in the gentle flag when the United States came here, the people rallied to me. I was a lieutenant colonel then. They rallied to me. And they freed themselves of the tyranny of Mexico. California was now part, or going to be part of the United States of America. And the Californians wrote their own constitution, ladies and gentlemen. And who was present at the writing of the Constitution, I ask? The Mexican people. And the Constitution was written in Spanish. Why? So that the Mexican people can see what their government is doing, so they can, what? Govern themselves. And you will find the signatories of the California Constitution to include Mexicans in their native tongue. Well, why not? They are people who want liberty. And now I come to you as a Major General, straight from the East, where we are now fighting a great civil war. When California became a state, there were people, the Democrats in the Congress of California, in the legislature of California, wanted California to be a slave state. I know, I was a Democrat at the time. I am now a Republican. However, be that as it may, before I am a Republican or a Democrat, I am an American, an avowed American, and 
I stand for this country, and I shall draw my sword for no other country but mine, the United States of America, and for the protection of its people and the Constitution of the United States of America. When we put together the Constitution of California, it became a free state. To the chagrin of the, of the Democrats, and they ousted me as one of them. That's why I became a Republican, because I was against slavery. And now, what has happened? In the East, the radical Democrats took possession of the once proud Democratic Party. That party had done so much and gave us illustrious individuals such as Mr. Jackson. But since, they've gone awry. Now, what's happened? Let me tell you the benevolence of the Southern plantation owner is something that no one can measure. The owner of the Southern Plantation, his charges are taken care of. He sees to their medical needs. He sees to their transportation needs. He sees to their house of worship. There is total equality with the Plantation Order. There's no such thing as difference in sexes there. Women, men, children, they're all the same. Because no matter what the plantation owner gives to their people, they refuse to give them freedom. And that's what we're here for now. Because if we have a constitution that's written that all men are created equal, how is it possible that half the United States would be free and half would not? So now, we're in the midst of this great war, and it is my belief that when it's ended, the United States shall be all free and done. And the people who come here from all flags and from all nations shall learn about our institutions and about our constitution and about our history. And they shall, say, they shall swear allegiance to the United States and the flag and the constitution. And when they do, ladies and gentlemen, they shall be Americans, no longer foreigners, but Americans. And they too shall share in the governance of this great land, as they should, as they must. But also, they shall share in the preservation of the greatest republic the world has ever known and will ever know. Now it is up to you, ladies and gentlemen. What say you? Are you willing to allow yourself to govern yourselves and your family? Or do you want the government to govern you? Much like in old California, or in Europe, or in, or in Africa, or in Asia. It matters not. Make your decision. But I say, choose well, because if you choose wrongly, your children will suffer the consequences. And I thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your time.